Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore, and welcome to this week's edition of the Hever Report with Sheer Hever, who now joins us from Germany. Sheer reports on Israel-Palestine, and he's studying the Israeli occupation of the Palestinian territories for the Alternative Information Center, which is a joint Palestinian-Israeli organization. Thanks for joining us again, Sheer. Hi, Paul. Great to be here. So what have you been working on this week? Stanley Fisher, the chairman of Israel's central bank, uh, just announced that he's uh, re resigning from his position as the chairman of Israel's bank. Uh, Stanley Fisher is a very interesting figure in uh, Israel's economic uh, scene and also a very important uh, political figure in Israel. He's, uh, uh, although he was not born in Israel and he only immigrated to Israel a few years ago, he came immediately to be uh, to take the position of the central bank. Uh, the, the chairman of the Central Bank of Israel, a very important position. I mean, he was actually hired to be chairman before he was living in Israel. Is that right? Exactly. And he used uh, his ability to, uh, as a Jew, uh, to immediately become a citizen of Israel. So he was actually offered the job before being an Israeli citizen, became an Israeli citizen, immediately took on this job. Now, he's considered a fairly popular figure, if I understand it correctly. But at the same time, the Israeli economy is... Inequality has grown tremendously. There have been mass demonstrations in the streets about unemployment and lack of cost of living and such. But does he not wear responsibility for some of this? Interestingly, no, he does not. Uh, he rarely appears on the media anyway because his Hebrew is not so good. Uh, and uh, when he does, it's usually uh, in a scene and a, a con conditions of his choosing. So uh, giving a speech in a, in a conference, for example. Uh, so actually, as a, as a chairman of the central bank, it's his responsibility to to make sure that things like uh, cost of living, cost of the of housing, don't get out of control. In fact, they do get out of control. Uh, Israel, um, the cost of, of an apartment compared to the average wage, is about twice as in uh, most countries in the developed world. Uh, it's about 160 months of salary to buy an average apartment, uh, and that's about double from uh, compared to the United States. Um, and um, in, a, a, as a chairman of the central bank, he kept saying there is no uh, problem in the real estate market. There is no bubble uh, of prices. And he actually did nothing about that. Uh, he also did nothing about uh, uh, the incredible power that banks have in Israel. Uh, the banking sector in Israel is extremely powerful. And it's very interesting to see that um, every time there is a sort of conflict, a sort of war or a, a Palestinian intifada, uncertainty rises, stock market, uh, stock prices drop, and at the same time, the bank stocks increase and the bank uh, um, profits increase as well. The banks strive from uh, uncertainty and uh, uh, stress. And um, there is a lot of protest in Israel because of the very high um, commissions, very high fees charged by the different banks. And uh, Stanley Fisher actually did also almost nothing about that, he, he, he defended the banks, although he's supposed to be the regulator who uh, controls them and, and keeps them. Uh, and how, how are the banks making money out of the wars? The banks uh, are uh, lend lending and loaning, but when people are desperate, for example, when there is a, a situation of war, people uh, in, in the war of 2006, for example, if, uh, tens of thousands of Israelis left their homes uh, in uh, close to the border of Lebanon and fled to the south uh, to live in hotels. And at that moment, uh, they would take a loan from the bank to, to pay for the hotel stay, regardless of what kind of interest the bank would take from them. Uh, later on, the insurance companies kick in, uh, also supported by the government, to pay compensations to people who had the, uh, their property damaged or lost days of work. And then a lot of money flows into the economy all of a sudden, and then these people have to decide what to do with the money. They go to the bank. They want to invest the money or to save the money. And again, they don't have any choice. They don't have any uh, options except for what the banks offer them. So this is a good example of how banks are able to exploit the consumers more when there is a situation of a crisis, when there is a situation of urgency. Um, but the one thing that Stanley Fisher did do as chairman of the central bank is um, to buy a lot of U.S. dollars. And that is because he became chairman in 2005, but in 2008, the global crisis of capitalism became all too apparent and there was severe worries about the United States. And Stanley Fisher started to buy dollars in very large amounts. In fact, this was the one policy that has been associated with him during those seven years that he served as chairman of the bank. 
and he he bought so many dollars that uh, uh, in fact uh, uh, an entire annual budget of the Israeli government is just sitting in the vault of the Central Bank of Israel even today uh, in the form of dollars. So that's something uh, which which certainly supported the U.S. economy. Israel is is very small, uh, a, a very small economy compared to the U.S. Of course, so the fact that Israel was buying these dollars is not what saved the the dollar the dollar globally, but it contributed something. And I think if you look at that policy within the context of his policies regarding housing and his policies regarding uh, the banking sector, then what you actually see is that he was constantly buying more time. He was constantly postponing the inevitable collapse uh, of the Israeli economy. During the crisis, he said Israel uh, has entered the uh, international crisis in, in a very good position, in fact, uh, uh, better than, than most countries in the world, and therefore Israel will not be affected by the crisis. As we know, after the um, pr protests of the last two summers in Israel, uh, of course, Israel was extremely affected by the crisis. It affected people's um, cost of living, ability to access jobs and housing. Um, but uh, interestingly, Stanley Fisher remained aloof. Beyond all that, he was not affected. Uh, he was not targeted by, by the protesters as uh, somebody who was uh, responsible for the deterioration of their standard of living. And now he's been considered um, possibly to, to a ministerial position after leaving the, uh, his position as chairman of the central bank. Hmm. Which means more, more, even more neoliberal economics in Israel. Yeah, and I think it's also interesting to see uh, the history of Stanley Fisher because he was um, uh, usually critical of Israeli policies in the sense of the occupation, and, and he actually wrote a, a few papers about uh, how Israel could stand to benefit from promoting the peace process with the Palestinians and eventually having a, a two-state solution uh, some, fr from an economic point of view, something which he wrote in the 90s during the Oslo process, completely neglected that topic as soon as he was offered a job by Netanyahu. Um, but uh, uh, also very interestingly, uh, when the Soviet Union was collapsing, he was uh, appointed first uh, a deputy of operations for the International Monetary Fund. And he was in charge in many ways um, to, to advise, to pressure um, uh, the, the Russia and the other Soviet, uh, uh, former Soviet republics uh, on what kind of economic policies they should adopt. When Boris Yeltsin was uh, struggling with, with uh, uh, privatization uh, uh, of uh, many government assets and, and trying to bring a, a capitalist economy into, into Russia, this caused a lot of protest within Russia. Uh, Stanley Fisher then uh, um, uh, made, gave a statement that he believes that uh, um, Russia should, should uh, work at full speed to hasten privatization even more, to hasten the progression into a capitalist economy as fast as possible. Um, and at some point, Boris Yeltsin decided to impose martial law in Russia. And that coincides with the time when um, hundreds of thousands and eventually approximately one million um, uh, people from the former Soviet uh, republics uh, and mainly Russia have immigrated to Israel. Uh, of course, those who had uh, some kind of Jewish background or someone Jewish in their family had a better chance of, of succeeding to em uh, emigrate into Israel. Um, they were fleeing uh, the, the very harsh conditions that existed at the time in the Soviet Union, something which Stanley Fisher is, is very much uh, um, involved in. And uh, actually, uh, Joseph Stiglitz uh, um, uh, pointed uh, uh, some accusations at Stanley Fisher for his role in destroying the, the Russian economy. And then a few years later, Stanley Fisher came and followed these people into Israel and also did his little immigration um, and uh, uh, once again came into a position where he could uh, control economic policy regarding these people. All right. Thanks very much for joining us, Sure. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.